going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of Operation Prelander. Um, for this episode, I'm gonna show you how to mount the SS3 Diodynamic Pros to your Sherpa roof rack. Um, I've got 12 of them, hoping that's gonna be enough. I might need to get some more lights, we will see. But I'm gonna kinda show you how I'm mounting everything to the rack and kind of the easiest way to do it. I recommend using a uh, quarter inch by 20 by half inch long hex bolt with a drop in nut to drop in the channel of the crossbar and mounting the brackets of the lights that way to the crossbar. Um, once we get all the lights mounted, we're gonna head over to Mitchell over at Blaze Off Road. He's gonna make a, another custom one of one harness for the light setup so that the lights can be dual function. So I can run either the four ambers on the outside or all of the center white lights. I've got a combination of uh, amber combos on the outsides of the rack, so two on each side. And then I've got, following that inside, two white combos and then the rest are gonna be white spots to throw a beam as far as they possibly can. They're all pros, so we'll see how many we can fit again. Might be 12, might be 14. I'm kind of leaning towards it might be 14, but let's dive into it. All right, so I went to Home Depot, got some quarter inch, 20, half inch long hex bolts. Look like this. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Little hex bolts like this, uh, half inch long. The hardware we're gonna keep out of the diode uh, hardware baggie is basically everything except for the carriage bolt, the large nut and the lock washer, keep everything else. Because what I'm doing is I'm stacking the hardware that um, Sherpa gave me, so like this little black washer over here. I'm putting that on the quarter inch hex bolt and then I'm using the larger washer that came with the, um, there we go, the diode kit and I'm basically stacking them. So it looks kind of like that. And then from there, this one is ready. You're gonna take your little nylon nuts, drop those into the light. You'll see them on the side. So it'll look like, I mean, it's hard to see in here. Let me see if I can, let's try this. Boom. So you drop it right inside that little channel there. You can see the little silver part of the nut. Drop in the other side. You want the nylon going in towards the light. Then I'm taking the diode bracket. The plug is on the bottom of the light and I'm having this go angled downwards like this. So the plug is down here on the light. This is going downward. You then take your diode hardware, which is a little washer and a little Allen nut. We're gonna thread this bracket onto the light. There's one. That's what I get for not having nails. Come on. Oh, that's why we have knives. Boom. Okay, washer on this little bolt. And then we're just gonna go into this nut. Okay. Then from there, I'm basically gonna set this up how I want it on the truck. So I'm gonna have it be pretty much like this. So it's flush. So I'm actually gonna tighten this all the way down. So I'm gonna tighten the bracket to the light. And I forget what size this Allen key is, but you guys can figure that out. If you can't, you probably shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> all right, let's see. Okay, I'm actually gonna tighten this all the way down. They don't need to be crazy tight, just tight enough not to move. Okay, so that is on and mounted, so you can see, plug is on the bottom, bracket is angled downwards, flush with the light. Now what I'm gonna do is use these drop-in nuts that Sherpa provided, so small little drop-ins. 
I'm gonna put that in the crossbar like so. And then we're gonna take our quarter by 20 half inch and we're gonna put that inside the bracket so it's sitting threads facing down. And this is, I can not be able to show you guys this part, but basically I'm gonna line up the threads on this with the drop-in nut, which is a little mission all in itself, but should be able to, I'm using the Davos Light Ranger in the rack so I can see a little better. Okay, that one started. And now, let me turn you guys around and show you the rack. So now what I can do is, since the lights are on there nice and tight, but not too tight where I can still move them up and down if I force them, these are still loose, right? The little hex nuts that we just put in there. So I can adjust these as need be. Right now, they're basically up like side to side, touching. And then what I'm able to do is, when I have them all where I want them, I just go in here with like an 11 mil, tighten these all down, and they'll be set. And I'm basically doing this running across the whole Sherpa rack. And the nice thing with the Sherpa rack is too, is this fairing is adjustable so I can move it up or down or wherever I want it to sit with the lights. I can have it sit with the lights like that, or I can drop it just below. So it's like that, pretty much however you want it. But I'm basically gonna keep repeating this process until I get as many of these lights on here as I possibly can. Whew, it's gonna take a while. Mitchell, it'll be all ready for you, man. All right, I'm gonna get these lights done and then we'll head over to Mitchell's for him to start wiring up a new harness. The lights that we're gonna go on the bumper here throw them up on the roof just so that Mitchell knows the spacing uh, for making the harness and also so I can see if I can also fit all 14 on so I'm getting another set I'm getting a replacement combo lens for amber and then I'm gonna get a spot amber there's a flood there right now so it's kind of useless it's more so for spacing the flood is actually gonna go in the bumper and then another set of combos are gonna go on the ditch lights but it looks really good. So tomorrow morning, I'm going over to Blaze Off Road to see Mitchell. He's gonna get started on making the new harness because the old one was for 10 lights. This one's for 14. You guys can kinda maybe see it there a little bit. Yeah, it's gonna look so good. There we go. I couldn't find that in your Apple Music library. Oh, you can you. ask me to play a radio station or ask for your music on a different app. I hate Siri. Um, but yeah, it looks really good. I'll show you guys with better lighting tomorrow when I go to Mitchell's, but this thing is gonna be bright and the back lighting is gonna look so good. Let's go to Mitchell. As you guys can tell, I just left the house. I am headed over to Blaze Off Road to meet Mitchell and have him basically make a brand new harness for this new light bar. It is a little bit trickier than traditional lights because they are all backlit. Literally all the diodes that are going on the truck are gonna be backlit except for the rock light and the bar for now. Um, so he's got a lot of work to do. Mitchell, I appreciate you, buddy. If you're looking for really good wiring, probably the best wiring in the state of Colorado, and probably surrounding states as well. Um, shit, maybe just all around. Automotive wiring, he's he's really good. He's, he's in the top for sure. Um, I would hit him up, even if it's just like ditch light harnesses, anything. If you want, you know, a nice harness for a light bar, whatever it may be. I'm gonna put his site down below in the description of this video. You guys can go check out his site, see all the stuff he offers. All my wiring is from him. Um, as well as my Garmin power switch. I have a dual Garmin power switch set up with his bracket, his wiring. Um, he installed the whole thing. We're gonna be putting power into my deck system as well. Uh, that'll be a different, different video. I'm running short on time here, but I'm gonna try to get as much done before Moab as I can um, for the Prelander series. 
But yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely go to Mitchell. You won't regret it. Let's go. So when you walk into Blaze, you got a fridge filled with goodies. Freezer. Ooh, with goodies. The camera. No goodies. Here's your little waiting area. You got some displays to play with. Dometic, Morimoto, Diodynamics, Garmin, Full Throttle, all the bits. And this is where the magic happens, people say. And there's the guy, the myth, the legend, the wiring god. No electrical fires 101. What not to do and what to do. <laughs> Working on Mr. Talon's ice truck. Fixing another shop's wiring, but I'll be next. Look at this guy. All the bits and pieces. And a heat gun. <laughs> As you can see, truck is now in the shop. Looking like a straight thickums. <laughs> Goes to Jake over at Lucid Wraps in a couple days. But today, Mitchell is fo gonna focus on the new light bar. I call it a light bar, it's just a bunch of SS3 Pros. Um, he's gonna be wiring the backlighting and then obviously wiring the lights. And then I'm getting replacement lights from Diode with a different lens and pat beam pattern for the third ones in. Um, and then we'll go to chase lights, but main goal today is to get that beast of a light set up wired in. It looks so good. I just gotta even out the spacing a little bit and make them all nice and flush and then it'll be good. But let's have Mitchell show us what he's gonna do. I think he's gonna take apart the connectors that the diodes come with um, and put some better components in it. And then he's gonna start doing what Mitchell does and make a badass harness. Let's see. Hey guys, Mitchell with Blaze Off-Road. I am prepping to make Josh's roof harness right now. We are reusing the Deutsch connectors that come with the light from Diode Dynamics. These housings are a couple bucks piece and I like to make my harnesses from scratch. So I know a lot of shops will go and just crimp connectors onto the end of these little pigtails. I don't like doing that, that's another failure point. Also, Diode uses stamp connectors. I use billet connectors. So they're a lot sturdier, a lot stronger, uh, and a lot more reliable. So we're gonna go ahead, take these guys apart, remake the harness and throw it on the truck. <laughs> So we are measuring the distance between the lights, essentially so I can design the harness because I'm doing a one piece harness. So I have two inputs and a ground, which will obviously be much larger ground wire to handle the power of all the lights. But we're going to do a three wire harness. Nope, four wire, because we also have the backlighting. So the backlighting will connect to every light and input one will connect to the ambers on both sides. And then input two will connect to the whites in the middle. So right now we're just measuring so that I know how long to make each pigtail because it doesn't go light to light to light all the way down. You have different breakouts that connect to different spots and we will show you what that looks like. So while Mitchell is working on the harness for the uh, roof bar setup, which is looking really, really good, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the ditch lights. So I'm just gonna start assembling and attaching the brackets to the lights themselves. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw them on the ditch light brackets on the truck. Um, that way he can see kind of where the plug is to keep everything nice with the new ditch light harness. But I'm gonna get cracking on this now. So when you guys are tightening this, uh, it's all stainless hardware. So make sure you turn slowly 
unless you have anti-seize, use it. I don't with me right now, so I'm just turning them real slow and not tightening them all the way at one time. So I'm doing one, one side a little bit and then going back to the other side to then finish tightening it up. Because if these C's in there, it's a nightmare. You go too fast, you'll make them seize and it's not a good time. There you go. Ready to go onto the truck for the ditch lights. All right guys, so I've already done it with the first part of the harness now, which we're gonna end up with four legs, pretty similar to this. Two for the outside for the ambers, and they will connect to the two for the inside lights for the, the clear lens lights. So essentially what I'm doing here is going ahead, putting the billet connectors, the billet pins onto the wire, crimping them down with the TE crimpers, and then throwing them into the housing for the Deutsch connectors. Super simple. on the harness. Mitchell is almost done with the light bar harness. We're gonna throw that up, test everything out, make sure it all works, and then we're gonna go to the dish light harness, which should be pretty easy, um, and get that backlighting done, and make sure everything works, and then we'll be out of here for the day. Then I'll come back for chase lights, chase bar, rock lights, bumper lights. I'm his favorite. All right guys, so I had to leave Mitchell's a little bit in a rush. So what he did is he wired up the whole roof bar here. I'll show you in just a second once I get out of how bright the sun is. There we go. Um, he wired up the roof bar like my old roof bar so that it's dual functionality. So what I can do is from my Garmin tablet, I can actually run it. So outer roof, it turns on just the outer roof. Center roof turns on the center roof to run them all at one time. I can then turn off the outer roof to run just the center. And then he also programmed them to run everything as a backlight, it's kind of hard to see, but any light that is backlight compatible has the backlighting turned on. You can kind of see it there. This one is wired to the OEM relay, so that one doesn't have the backlighting wired in, but everything else like this has the backlighting turned on. So again, with the tablet, we were able to make custom screens with the Garmin power switch system. So I can run this as a dual function. I have um, in the custom section, a backlighting button that turns on all the backlighting on all the switch, all the lights. That'll go to the chase lights as well. I've got a roof bar light that turns on just the entire roof bar. I've got a trail mode that'll turn on all the lights up front. And I'm probably gonna modify that a little bit so it doesn't just turn on every single light, but more of the necessity lights like ditch lights, a set of bumper pods, and maybe the outer on the roof bar. But Highly recommend one, the Garmin power switch and the Overlander tablet, but also the diode dynamic lights. They are super focused, they're super bright. The light is very usable throughout the entire beam pattern. Um, Mitchell obviously makes some great harnesses here. You guys probably saw him building them, but yeah, I mean, to say that this is, is a great setup is just an understatement. It's, it's probably about as good as it gets. Between these pros, the SS3 pros, the SSC2s in the bumper that are gonna also go to chase lights, um, being able to fit 14 of those on the Sherpa rack just makes a world of difference. I only fit 10 Morimoto's on my last rack. 14 of these, this, this light's gonna be go going everywhere at night. We're gonna do a trail run in Moab, I think, where I'll be able to get tested out. Hoping my rock lights make it here in time. I'm not 100% sure if they're gonna make it or not, but we will see. I'll hopefully have the chase lights wired up here soon. Um, chase lights and chase, we make, we're making a chase bar out of diode pods, which will be really cool. But yeah, that is basically the install process of this light bar setup um, with the wiring and functionality using the Garmin and then Mitchell from Blaze Off Roads wiring harnesses. Next video, I think I'm gonna go drop off some wheels, pick up a bumper, start wiring in, um, 
more of the ditch light stuff, the bumper light stuff, but yeah. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Till next time, peace.